In this clip I'm going to go through the details of how to calculate probabilities using the normal distribution. As such, this is in addition to what I have in the lecture slides, uh, probability 2 PDF. One piece of information you need to do this is a table, the normal table, and you can get this, this looks like this, and you can get that from the Blackboard side in the Topic 3 folder. There's uh, exactly this file as a PDF file. We'll use this frequently as we go. So let me first sketch uh, a little normal distribution. To be precise, the probability density function of a normal distribution. So we have an axis, our random variable, let that be x and we have the density function, we call it f of x, and then a normal density will look something like this. Okay, it's possibly not the nicest one, there will possibly be worse looking ones coming along. We know a normal distribution is symmetric, that means the mean is going to be at the center of this distribution. The important thing to understand is that uh, probabilities in this world are the same as areas underneath that function f of x. Okay, so areas underneath here are probabilities. And the entire area uh, underneath here will, let me just do this in red stripes, so in the entire area here represents the probability that our outcome of x will take any value on that axis. And that probability is going to be equal to 1. And we already discussed in the lecture the probability of having an outcome smaller than the mean, given this is a symmetric distribution, that probability is going to be 0.5 because that mean will split the distribution into two bits. So but what we may now be interested in is probabilities of this type. What's the probability that x is going to be larger than this value and say smaller than this value. So what we are now interested in is this sort of area here. How big is that sort of area? Okay, and to find that out, so that's not as easy. What we need is we need to use the normal distribution table. So uh, that is uh, this guy. This guy will, is going to be our friend very soon. So let's have a little look at this table. In a minute, let me first just draw a new distribution. So this is getting too crowded. So let's draw a new one. So as you've seen up here, I didn't say what the mean was. Let me now say, let, let me talk about a random variable, let's call it z and that is standard normally distributed. So it has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. So, and here's our normal distribution. That's pretty. And we know the mean for this guy is going to be 0. So what we need to understand is what these values in that table mean. Okay, You can see there are lots of values and uh, we need to understand what they mean. So here we have our normal table. Okay, so let me uh, explain first these, what these query numbers are. They are the most important things to start out with. You see here in the first column numbers like negative 2.9, negative 2.8 and always a zero in the second digit after the decimal point. But then you see on the first row, you see numbers from 1 to 9. It turns out these numbers will be the second digit after the point. So let me use uh, an example. Let's say 
we have a value here of negative 2.54 okay and what we want to know is what is the probability that our z value what is the probability that the z value is smaller than that value negative 2.54 now to find that value, which is equivalent to the area underneath the curve here, to find that value in the table, I need to find that value, negative 2.54. So how do I find that? I will find negative 2.5, and now I need to find the 4, the second digit, and I'll look for that in the top uh, row. The 4 is here, so this value here is our relevant value, negative 2.54 and that value here, that is equivalent exactly to the probability that our set standard normally distributed random variable is smaller than that value, that is in fact also the example used up here in the table so 0 0.0055 that is exactly that probability 0 0.055 so the area in here is 0 0.0055. Now immediately we know what the area over here is. Let me just use a different color here. Immediately we know what the size of this area is. Okay, that is 1 minus. 0.0055 and that is of course the same as 0 0.9945 so the probability that z is larger than negative 2.54 is the same as 0.9945 or approximately 99.5% now you might argue does it make a difference whether I had written said large or equal than negative 2.54 and the answer is no it doesn't make a difference it's exactly that because we know that the probability of being exactly equal to negative 2.54 is equal to zero it's one of the properties of continuous distributions so but the important thing to learn from here is that these dark green values, these type of probabilities, smaller than a certain value, these are the probabilities we can get from the normal table. That means when we calculate problems, we will have to break down the problem into these type of probabilities. So, let me use a different example. Let me first draw, we'll, we'll keep this picture, this in the picture. Next problem. Still a standard normally distributed problem. We have our beautiful Gaussian distribution. As it is standard normal, we know the mean is zero. And the probability we are now after is the probability that z is smaller than 1.47. So that we want to find out, so 1.47, let's place that here. Or we know it's to the right of zero, how far, it doesn't really matter. This is just a little picture, a little sketch to help our calculation. So we want the probability that z is smaller than this. That probability is, of course, again, going to correspond to the area underneath the curve here. So that green area, the size of that green area is equal to the probability. So what do we need to do is we need to go to the table, we need to find that value and then the value in the table will give us the sign of the probability. So we go to the table, 1.47, so we need to find in the first column, we need to find 1.4 here we've got negative 1.4, but we need 1.4. So we'll go down to 
have a down here, we got 1.4. And then we need 7, now that has gone a little bit out of, of the picture. 7 is the third column from the right, so let's go back down. 1.47, that means we're talking about this value. So the probability is 0.9292. Point 0.9292 0 0.9292 and that is immediately as we are looking for a probability smaller than that value that is exactly what we have here okay so we took that value 1.47 went to the table found out what the probability is and that is our result um, as the next problem let us try and find the probability that Z is larger or equal to 1.47. Of course, uh, we've just discussed that is the, exactly the same as just the probability that Z is larger than 1.47. And that value, let me use a different color. That color wasn't very nice, I used before. That is going to be exactly equal to the size of this area here. And what is that going to be since the area underneath the entire density function is 1? That area is going to be 1 minus 0 0.9292. And that is equal to 0 0.0708. So this is the value of my probability. So the important thing is to realize that this type of probability, probability that set is larger than a certain value, we cannot read from the table. But we can use that green type of probability to calculate that blue type of probability. So next problem, let us leave this in the picture. The uh, so I want to draw another distribution. I'm getting practice in this. We're still talking about Z, so standard normally distributed random variable. Should have created a little template here. So zero is here. And let's say we are now interested in the probability that Z is larger than negative 2.05 but smaller than 0.78. So let's just draw in two values, negative 2.05 and let's say plus 0.78. So somehow, so what we are after now is this Reddit area. Now we actually do this quite faint, okay? Oh, almost, this is actually pink. But here we go. Okay, this area here, this is what we are after. The question is, how can we deconstruct this into areas, into probabilities using areas that have that are like the green type, which are basically from negative infinity up to a certain value. The problem is now don't have that because our array here on the left has this ending point negative 2.05. So here is how it goes. What we will have to calculate is now I just do a little indicate the areas. We can calculate the probability of the blue type. Okay, that is the probability that Z is smaller than 0 0.78. That of course is not the same as what we are after. Okay, our our area here. So that's not the same, but if we subtract this probability 
from the plus one, what we are left with is exactly what we are after. And that red type of probability, of course, we can calculate. That is probability that z is smaller than negative 2.05. So, if we calculate the blue probability and we subtract the red probability, what we get is exactly what we want. So let's do that. Okay, so what's the blue probability? We need to find 0.78 in our table. 0.7 is here, 8 is the second to last column, so the probability here is 0.7823. So the blue probability is 0.7823. Okay, so important that includes that little tail here. So we have 0.7823. And now we need to find the uh, red probability. For that, we need to find negative 2.05 in our table. So let's find negative 2.05, so we have negative 2, and then we need 5, so that probability is 0 0.0202. So the red one here is 0 0.0202, so we subtract that, 0202, and of course what we get is 0. 7621. Okay, so this is this, and that is, uh, and I regret that I used pink, I'll have to use a darker pin. That is this one, 0 0.7621. And we have solved our problem. So you can calculate any type of probabilities, either a probability that something is smaller than a certain value probability that something is larger than a certain probability, or the probability that something is in between two values. You can use that always after breaking the problem down into probabilities of the smaller than type. So this was all using said random variables. Okay, These were standard normally distributed random variable. So we use the standard normal distribution. However, I told you in the lecture that there is a large amount of different normal distribution. So now we'll use just x is distributed normally with some mean and some generic variance. So that is a Let's call it a general normal distribution. So it's not a particular one. So let's use uh, the example, the same example as in the lecture. Let's say our x is normally distributed with mean 0.8 and variance 0.16. Okay, so that's the mean and that's the variance. So if we have now our x variable and we have f of x, our density, let's say here it is, we know that this is going to be centered around its mean of 0.8. And let's say in this distribution what we are after is the probability that x is smaller than 1.6. So that means, let's say 1.6 is somewhere here. That means what we are after is 
the screen type of probability. Now that was easy because we said our our normal table really gave us that sort of probabilities. So if x had been set, all we needed to do was we would have to have to find that value of 1.6 in the table and we could read off the probabilities. But that table is only valid that normal distribution table which we used before that is only valid for that set for that standard normally distributed random variable that means it is not valid for this x okay now of course one solution would be I give you another table for normal distribution with mean 0.8 and variance 0.16 and that's fine, I could do that. But then there would be an infinite amount of different normal distributions, and I don't want to give you an infinite amount of tables. So somehow we got to we got to do something about it. And basically how we're gonna do this is we're going to translate this problem into a set problem, into a standard normal problem, and we're gonna solve the problem into in the standard normal world and then retranslate it back okay so we're gonna um, first step is we're gonna translate into set that was step one then step two we're gonna solve it and then step three is going to translate back into this world. So that means as we can solve any probability problem in the said world, okay, the only question that remains is we need to figure out how to translate this. So let me just draw here a. Oops. Ah, that was not very nice. Let me try that again. Much better. Okay, a set distribution that is centered around zero. So basically, we can find a probability here that is exactly the same as the probability we are looking up here. Okay, so we can find some sort of value set here that gives us exactly the same probability. The question is just what value of set is that? And now we are using a technique which actually we have already learned and that is beautiful. Of course we know the set we're going to use, this green here, let's use red because it's so important. The set we're going to use, a translation between x and z is going to work as follows. And you will know this formula. So I put the z and the x in red because that is what we want to translate between. It's like translating between two currencies and this is how we translate. We take the x minus its mean divided by its standard deviation and that will give us the set value. So here in this particular case let me actually highlight these values here the mean and the standard deviation they of course come from here Okay, this is the variant. This is the variance as sigma squared, but that's going to be related to here. So, how do we translate that? What is the x value we want? Our x value is 1.6 minus the mean. The mean is 0.8. Okay, and that comes from up here. Divided by the standard deviation. Now, the stand if that 0.16 is the variance, then 
we know that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance and the square root of 0.16 turns out to be 0.4 so here we divide by 0.4 therefore the set value is going to be equal to 2 okay so for this particular distribution the value of 1.6 translates into a value of 2 that is for this particular case because it depended on the mean and the standard deviation of the variance and what particular value of x we looked like and now we can solve the problem in the set world because we can calculate that sort of probability what's the probability that z is smaller than 2 well we just need to go to our table we need to find 2 okay 2.00 that is exactly what we want the first column here has a 0 as the second digit so where is it 2.00 so this is our probability 0 0.9772 so this probability here is 0 0.9772 so here we have 0 0.9772 Seven seven two, and now translating back is incredibly easy because we'll just pick up our result and we use it up here 0.9772 because remember how did I motivate the result we wanted to find that set value that gives us exactly the same probability here so therefore we solve then the set value and the third step was then just taking the result and put, putting it into your original problem. So this is how we translate from any sort of random, uh, sorry, from any sort of normal distribution to the standard normal distribution. And now let's go back and see. So that was for the probabilities that x is smaller than a certain value. Will that same trick work? for probabilities that x is larger than a certain value or that x is between two values absolutely yes because remember how we solve this larger problem and the in-between problem it was that we broke it down into smaller than problems either then to calculate one minus smaller that gave us the larger one or that we had to subtract two probabilities of the smaller than type but that means we can, if you need to calculate two probabilities, you may have to translate two probabilities. If you have a problem like this in the X world, you just have to do two translations. You need to translate the 0 0.78 and the negative 2.05. And all the rest works exactly the same. Okay, that was uh, the end of this video.